Okay? So if I lift something from the floor to a shelf, I change its potential energy, which means I did work. Because if its potential changed, then part of its mechanical changed. If I kick something along the floor, and it stays right along the floor, but it goes faster, then I've changed its kinetic. And thus, I've done work, because kinetic is part of mechanical. Right? Now, if I kick a football and it goes up and faster, then I've changed both. All three situations count as work, because at least one part or both parts of that mechanical energy have changed. Okay? So let's look at an example of this with this uh, inclined plane here. So at the beginning of this question, the um, 1.2 kilogram block is at the bottom of the ramp, moving at one meter per second. At the end of this question, it's at the top of the ramp, eight, or 0 0.850 meters higher, and it's moving at four meters per second. Is work done in this situation? Okay, how do I know? It's potential and... Sorry, okay. Yeah. Kinetic. Kinetic energy. Okay, both of its energies changed. I made it go higher, so its potential energy changed. That would involve me doing work. But it also went faster. I accelerated it up the ramp. Okay? That's a lot of work. Right? I changed both kinds of energy. So in this question, this is actually, I you know it doesn't seem like it right now, but this is actually a pretty basic work energy theorem question because I don't have to use force times distance here. It just asks how much work is done. Okay? So in this case, work is going to be the change in energy, which is just going to be final mechanical energy minus initial mechanical energy. Okay, So here's how these questions kind of go along. This is the initial form. It's just work energy theory, works a change in energy. Okay, And then I expand that out to show how I calculate change in energy, final minus initial. Then I expand it again, and again, and again, until I get to the point where I can start manipulating or plugging numbers in. Okay? So, can I expand out mechanical energy to a bigger formula? Right? So I can say then that that would mean the final potential plus the final kinetic minus the initial potential plus the initial kinetic. Okay. So am I, am I still writing the same thing? I'm just expanding it out. Every single one of those lines has said work is a change in energy. I'm just getting more and more detail as I expand it out. Now, before I go any further, because it'll save me writing, are any of those four forms of energy zero? Is it potential final? Not potential final, but potential initial. initial. Because where do we start? Yeah, at the bottom of the ramp. What's your height at the bottom? Zero. zero. Okay, so that's another thing that we have to be able to recognize. We have to read a question and from the context of the question be able to recognize is a certain form of energy changing? We did that already. And were any of them zero? Because it simplifies the question for us if they are. Right? So we can take this out right now. That's good because now I need to expand it again. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is put in the formulas for all of these. Do I know what the formulas for potential and kinetic energy are? Okay, so I can say work equals m times g times h final, so that's my final potential, plus 1 half mv final squared, so that's my final kinetic, minus 1 half mvi squared. That's my initial kinetic. Okay. 
The question wants me to solve for work. Is this equation already set up to do that? It is. Okay. In other questions, you might be asked to solve for final speed or final height, in which case you have to manipulate, a lot like you did in the roller coaster questions in Science 10, solving for a height or a speed or something like that. Okay. But in this case, we're just being asked to solve for work. Can I plug in numbers? Right. I don't have to manipulate, then it's time to plug numbers in. All right. They told me the mass of this thing was 1.2 kilograms. Okay. And I know that G is 9.81. And I know that the final height was 0 0.850 meters plus one half times 1.2 kilograms times four squared, because that was my final speed, four meters per second. Okay, and then minus one half times the mass, still 1.2, times the initial speed, one. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Can I punch it in my calculator now? I'm at that point, right? All right, so uh, 1.2 times 9.81 times 0.85 plus 0.5 times 1.2 times... Oh, good catch. Okay, 1.2 times uh, 16, 4 squared. Okay, all right, minus 0.5 times 1.2 times 1 squared, which is 1, so I'm not going to bother putting in the square. All right, 19 joules is how much work would be required to accelerate that block up the ramp. Are these a bit more algebra intensive than the Newton questions? Yes. Okay, they are. There's no way around that. These are going to involve some of the most complex algebra you will do in this course. Okay, there's a lot of numbers to write out, variables to manipulate and solve for. There's a lot of that in these kind of questions. But the good news is, is you did this last year. Okay. The manipulation here is no more difficult than the roller coaster questions on conservation of energy that you did in grade 10. Okay. All right. Um, questions on how we did that one. Okay. So the biggest thing here, guys, is being able to look at the context of the question and identify, is work being done? If so, what kind or kinds of energy is changing? Set it up and then solve. Okay? But the biggest challenge is identifying from the context what is going on, same as it was for me. Okay? It's reading that question through and being able to visualize what's happening. Okay, I want you guys to try question number one. Okay? So if you're rappelling, essentially what you're doing when you rappel is you jump off a cliff, but you have a rope and a carabiner that you can use as a brake. All right? Because if you just jump off a cliff and you don't have a rope and a carabiner, it's a law of conservation of energy question. You will have just as much energy at the bottom of the cliff as you had at the top. It starts as potential and turns into kinetic and that turns out badly. Okay? In this situation, when you get to the bottom, you mercifully have less mechanical energy at the bottom than you had at the top. That makes this survivable. Right? So what you're trying to find here is how much work was done in order to slow you down. Because it says here you get to the bottom at 5 meters per second. If you fall 25 meters, you're going to go faster than 5 meters per second. Okay? So somewhere along the way, energy is being lost. Work is being done and taking it away. All right? So I'm going to give you a few minutes on that question. Okay? Work is a change in energy. See if any of your forms of energy are zero. Okay, and see if you can solve for work. Okay, has anyone ever done rappelling before? Okay, like when you rappel and you have that carabiner on, so it's just a metal clip that your rope goes through, and if you change the angle of the rope, 
you can use it as a brake. Okay, if you have the rope behind you, okay, it goes, it, it slows, I think it slows down, and you have it out to the side, it's the other way around. Either way, it's friction. When you're rappelling, you don't want to get your bare forearms anywhere near that carabiner because it's raging hot, okay, and you will burn your arm on it because what it's doing is it's turning your mechanical energy from your fall into heat to save your life in the same way that your brakes do on your car. Okay? So if we're trying to figure out how much work is done by the rope, we just need to find the change in energy. Final energy minus initial energy. Now if I'm standing at the edge of a cliff and about to jump off, what's my speed? Zero. Right. Do I have any kinetic energy at the beginning then? Okay, so that would mean then that I don't have any initial kinetic, I only have initial potential. So I'm simplifying right off the bat. Do I have any potential when I'm at the bottom? I only have kinetic. So that means all of my final mechanical energy is kinetic. Okay, do I have formulas for those two things? Yeah. yeah. All right, so the work done by the rope is going to be one half MVF squared, my final kinetic energy, which is my final mechanical energy, minus my initial mechanical energy, which just happens to be all potential because I'm standing at the top of the cliff. Okay? Since I know all of these numbers, I can just plug straight in. One half times 72 kilograms times five meters per second squared. Okay, minus uh, 72 kilograms times 9.81 times 25 meters. Now, I think this is the part that bothered people. They didn't like that it was negative. Do you need to do brackets in these situations? Uh, I wouldn't have to here because order of operations would do it right. It would do the multiplication before it's subtracted. Okay? You could, if you wanted to, put brackets in. It won't change the answer in this situation. Okay, so here's what happens. I have more energy at the top than I have at the bottom, right? So I lose mechanical energy to the rope. The rope gets hotter because it takes my mechanical energy away. To my point of view, it's negative work. I'm losing energy to the rope. Okay? So my energy, my work is negative in this situation because I have less when I get to the bottom, thankfully, than I have at the top. Okay? If I have as much as I had at the top, I'm a flat as a pancake at the bottom. Okay? That makes sense to everybody? Okay, now that one, again, not a lot of work there, but I had to recognize that I had no kinetic at the beginning, no potential at the end, and then know what to do from there. Okay, now, number two is very much like that. Okay, in number two, I'm lifting something up. Okay, they're telling me how much force I use to lift. They're telling me how far I lift it. A height can also be a distance. Okay, I want you to see if you can answer A, B, and C for number two. Okay, give you a few minutes on that. This one involves force and time distance, and it involves change in energy. It involves both. Okay, so for part A, they just want us to calculate the amount of work done. Do I know the force and the distance? Is that the simplest way to calculate work? Then if I have those two pieces of information, that's the way I should do it. Okay, so for part A, I'm just going to say that work equals force times distance. That's going to be 150 newtons times 5 meters. That's 750 joules. Part A is done. I just have to go force times distance. Okay, now obviously if I'm lifting something, I'm going to change the potential energy. Okay, but we can't assume that all 750 joules is necessary to lift it, okay? If I lift it at a constant speed, I still do work. Would you agree? All right, so 
Part B says, what's the change in gravitational potential energy? Okay, well, then I would have to assume that I start from where? Ground. From the ground. Okay, so that's going to mean m times g times h final, my final potential energy, minus my initial potential energy, which, if we start on the ground, is what? Zero. So I can get rid of that. So that means the change in potential energy is equal to my final potential energy. That makes sense. If I start out with none, whatever I have at the end is how much I changed it by. Okay? So I take the mass of the object, 9 kilograms, multiply it by gravity, and then multiply it by the height. Okay, so 9 times 9.81 times 5. 441 joules. Okay, I did 750 joules worth of work, but I only changed the gravitational potential energy by 441 joules. Do I have joules left over? What do you suppose they did? Lost. Nope. No kinetic energy. They changed the kinetic energy. Remember, a work is a change in mechanical energy. That means you could change potential and kinetic or kinetic. Either one can be true. In this case, if I only change the potential by that much, the joules left over are going to kinetic. Here's the other thing to think about. I used 150 newtons worth of force. Is that more than was necessary to lift it? It is because the weight of that object is only 88 newtons. I used 150. Do I have a net force? What do net forces do to objects? They make them accelerate. If something accelerates, is it speed changing? Then it's kinetic energy is changing. So anytime there's a net force, I'm changing the kinetic energy. Because by definition, a net force causes an acceleration, which means the kinetic energy has to change. Okay? Can you leave my alone? They're not giving me my phone back. It's not. Give her her phone back. Oh my gosh, so childish. Okay. So, I did 750 joules worth of work. Only 441 of that went to potential. How do I calculate how much went to kinetic? Subtract. Subtract, yeah. Okay. So to calculate the change in kinetic, I just go 750, my change in mechanical, minus the change in potential. That should give me the change in kinetic. Okay. So this is work minus the change in potential. Okay. That's going to give me the change in kinetic, right? which is going to be 309 joules, right? So there's my change in kinetic energy, 309 joules. Okay. For question number three, this is where we're talking about the thing I just illustrated, the net force causing acceleration, which means a change in kinetic energy happens. Okay. In part three, they want us to draw a free body diagram of this situation. my free body diagram. How do you know it's 88? 9 times 9.81 is 88.29. Sorry, I did that up here before. Um, okay, so this is, sorry, this is the force of gravity, m times g. Yeah? Can I calculate my net force? Okay, so my net force will be 150 minus 88.29. Okay, there's my net force, 61 0.71. Okay, so I've done A, okay, and now it wants to know, calculate the work done on the mass by this net force. So, force times distance. What do you suppose 61.71 times 5 comes to? Well, 
What kind of energy does a net force change? Kinetic. What was our change in kinetic energy? 309. That was our change in kinetic. 61.71 times 5 is? 308 point something, right? 309. Rounds to 309. Right? 309 joules. Okay, everyone all right with that idea? Okay, all that's trying to show you is this. I don't need a net force to change potential. But if a net force is present, kinetic has to change. Okay? Kinetic has to change in the presence of a net force because net forces cause accelerations. Okay? That's what we're trying to get out of this question, is to realize that if you have a net force more than is necessary, you are going to cause an acceleration, and that means a change in kinetic energy. Okay? Now, a lot of intuitive stuff in this again. Okay? This one just has the math to match. Okay? Whereas Newton's ones ne didn't always necessarily. Okay. Copy this one down, and we're going to do it together. This is a pretty typical work energy theorem question. We have this 1,500 kilogram car, and it's being pushed down a frictionless incline. Now, if I just left the car alone, would it go down the frictionless incline? It would, okay? But if that happened, its energy at the top and its energy at the bottom would be equal. And that would mean there's no work being done because there'd be no change in energy. But in this situation, for whatever reason, somebody decided that wasn't good enough and pushed the car down the frictionless incline, which would have been a neat trick. Because I don't know how you push something when there's no friction, because then you have no traction. But let's just say that happened, okay? And they pushed it down the ramp, okay? Are they doing work then? Yeah. yeah. Are they exerting a force over a distance? Yeah. yeah. They are. Okay. So we know that this ramp is 15 meters long, and we know that at the top of the ramp, the car, which is 1,500 kilograms, is moving at 1.2 meters per second. and has a height of three meters. We're going to push down the ramp with 450 newtons. We want to know how fast it's going at the bottom. Okay, so that means then I'm looking for Bf. Agree? Okay. What's Hf? Zero. Zero. I'm at the bottom of the ramp. Okay, so my final height is zero meters. Okay. So we've already established because there's a force here and it's going down the ramp over a distance that work is being done. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. So then I can start out this as a work energy theorem question. Work is a change in mechanical energy. In this case, I have force and distance. So I'm going to want to use that. Okay. To calculate some part of the change in mechanical energy. Okay. Can I expand this out further? So that's what I'm going to do then. Okay, I'm going to say force times distance equals potential energy final plus kinetic energy final minus potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial. Okay, are any of those zero? Which one? EP final, because we're at the bottom of the ramp. Okay, I'm looking for VF. That's part of this term, would you agree? My final speed is part of my final kinetic energy. So I want to isolate this. How do I move this thing here over to the other side? Add it. Here's why that needs to make sense intuitively. 
the change in energy, force times distance, the work, plus my initial energy should equal my final energy. Would you agree? That's why moving it over by adding it is okay. All right. So we're going to have force times distance plus EP initial plus EK initial. That can be in brackets or not. It doesn't matter. Okay. Equals kinetic energy final. Can I expand further? Yep. Okay, now I put in the formulas. Force times distance plus M times G times H initial plus one half MV initial squared equals one half MV final squared. All right, I'm looking for VF squared. What do I do with the half and the M? Divide them over to the other side. Okay. Do those cancel? They do not. Okay, because I have addition and subtraction on the top. If everything on the top was being multiplied, absolutely I could cancel them, but it's not. Okay. I look I'm looking for VF not Vs squared. What do I have to do? Square root. Okay. All right, is this fairly algebraically involved? Like, there's a lot of manipulation here, right? More so than we've really had in any other question we've done so far in the course. These questions are probably some of the most algebraically involved questions you will do, right? short of satellite questions. All right, now, in, these one, in this here now, I can plug in my numbers. Okay, force was 450 newtons times the length of the ramp, 15 meters, plus 1,500 kilograms, the mass of the car, times gravity, 9.81, times the height, 3 meters, plus 1 half times the mass of the car, times the initial speed of the car, which was, was it 4.2? 1.2. Come on. Okay, so that's going to be a lot of number punching into the calculator. 450 times 15 plus 1500 times 9.81 times. Um, Three meters, right? No. Yeah, it was three meters, right? Yeah, three meters. Plus 0.5 times 1500 times 1 1.2 squared. Okay, now I'm going to divide that by half of, nine, of uh, 1500, so divide that by 750, and then I'm going to square root that. Okay. So the car will be moving at 8.3 meters per second at the bottom of the ramp. Okay, does everyone follow what we did there? This manipulation is really not much different than what you would have done in a roller coaster question in Science 10. Do you have to use brackets in this one? Nope, I didn't use any brackets in that one. I put it all in in a line. Okay. I just wouldn't try and put it in all at once. I did force times distance and hit equals. And then I added the 1500 times 9.81 times 3 and hit equals. That way if I messed up, I don't have to go back one step. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. You could put it all in in one step with brackets if you wanted to. Okay? But then you would have to do this. Top in brackets divided by bottom. All right, questions on what we did there? Does it make sense intuitively? Okay, that's what's important. The, the, the algebra part will come. I trust that you guys' math skills are good enough. You'll figure that part out. As long as we understand why that worked, that's what's important here. Okay, okay. this question is very, very, very similar to the last one. There's one tiny change. 
your method is almost identical. But there's one very, very important change that you have to recognize to get it right. The mass. Nope. Oh, it's 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 the angle is necessary to get to the right answer, but that's not the big change. It's one extra step, but it's not the big change. Okay? Think about this. On the last question, I pushed the car in the direction it would have naturally gone. In this one, friction is resisting. It's going the way that the, that the object doesn't want to go. So think about what that means in terms of your work. Okay, the key to this one is that the work being done is negative because it is taking your energy away. Friction works against you. Thus, you will have less energy at the bottom of the conveyor than you do at the top because you will do work against friction and some of your energy will be converted to heat and sound and various other forms of energy. Okay, so we have the boxes going down this 15 degree hill, basically. Okay. We know that the boxes are 200 kilograms, okay. and they're going from the top to the bottom. They're initially moving at 0.75 meters per second, and they are 2.5 meters above the bottom. At the end, their height is zero. We're looking for VF. Okay? And we know that the force of friction, which is the force that's doing the work and causing the change in energy, is uh, 150 newtons. What we need to know is the length of the ramp. That way we know the distance over which that force does work. Okay? So to find the length of the ramp, we're looking for the hypotenuse of the triangle. So that's going to mean the sine of 15 equals um, 2.5 over the hypotenuse. So if I want to get the hypotenuse, I go 2.5 divided by the sine of 15. Okay, so that side is 9.66 meters. Okay, so now I know the distance over which this force works. Now I can set up work energy theorem. Work is the change in mechanical energy. Okay, that means the force of friction. Now it's not the time. Times the distance equals the change in mechanical energy. So final minus initial. Okay, um, then I can expand this out further. Force of friction times distance equals um, my initial potential plus my initial kinetic, sorry, my final, final goes here, okay, minus my initial potential plus my initial kinetic. Now, same as the last question, my final position is bottom of the ramp. What's my height? Zero. Okay, what's my final potential? Zero. Alright, I'm trying to solve for VF, which is part of EK final. What do I do with this? I add it to the other side, same as we did in the last question. Force of friction times distance plus M times G times H initial plus one half MV initial squared equals one half MV final squared. Okay, EKF. Now, I need to plug in my number. Oh, sorry, before I plug in my numbers, I've got to manipulate for VF. So what do I do with the half M? Divide. Is everything so far pretty much the same as the last one? Yes. I haven't got to that part that's different yet. Okay? So, I'm going to divide both sides by half of M. And then I'm going to square root. Still nothing different. Last step. That's the length of the ramp. Force times distance. 
friction is causing you to lose energy. Therefore, the work done by friction must be negative. The only way to get that is to have friction be negative. Okay, yes, friction always works against you. Okay, so I can't say it's always negative because you may have made that direction positive for whatever reason. I thought you'd okay. not be able to square a negative number. Don't worry, we're okay. Plus, uh, 200 times 921 times, uh, what was the height of that? 2.5 meters. Plus 1 half times 200 times 0.75. That was the speed at the top squared. Okay, so Caden, you're saying, well, I can't take the square root of a negative number. Nope, you're absolutely right, you can't, but it won't come out negative because I'm adding these two very big numbers, okay? All that's all it's happening here is my energy at the bottom is going to be less because I made the work negative, which I had to do, okay? I still have positive energy because I'm totally positive up here, positive energy, okay, but. Um, it's just less than. Yeah, all right, so when we punch all of this in, okay, so we got um, negative 150 times the length of the ramp, that number, okay, that's our negative work right there, okay, guys, hey, looking up here, please, okay, so there's my negative work, now I'm gonna add in my energies, 200 times 9.81 times 2.5, Okay, now it's already positive, plus the initial kinetic, 0.5 times 200 times 0.75 squared. Okay, now I'm gonna divide that by 100, half of 200, okay, and then I'm gonna square root that. 5.9 meters per second at the bottom of the ring. Okay, guys, here's the good news. These work energy theorem questions, while fairly algebra intensive, all work the same. Okay? You're plugging in work as a change in energy, you're using force times distance. There's just a lot of algebra, I'll give you that. There's a lot of algebra in these things. Is this okay? be on this Tomorrow's yeah. quiz is on work energy theorem, but here's what I'm gonna do. Okay? It's gonna be questions like this, but Depending on how it goes, I may not count. We may just use it as additional questions because this is still fairly new to us, okay? But I am gonna post the quiz with the solutions video, check it out tonight, okay? And then come in and try it tomorrow. We'll see how it goes, okay? Mr. Yeah. Hello.